Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to look at the capital gains reserve. This is a fairly advanced concept. This is necessary for those going through the financial planning designations or pursuing say the Chartered Life Underwriter designation. If you're pursuing your life insurance or a mutual funds license or even the Canadian Securities course, uh, this is not necessary at those levels. If you're seeking tax advice, this is only very general information. You absolutely must go and get yourself a qualified tax professional. Even for the financial advisors and financial planners doing this, this is presented as general information. If we're going to be doing one of these applications in real life, then it is important that we actually involve the accountant or tax lawyer. So we're going to look at what a reserve is. It's a fairly complicated tax concept. It's not necessarily intuitive. We're going to look at planning with the reserve and then using the lifetime capital gains exemption. We're going to do a little bit of math as we often do. And we're going to look at some what if scenarios, these unusual sets of circumstances that might arise. So what is a reserve? Well, basically with a reserve, you would just have some sort of capital gain that arises. And it's usually with capital gains. There are some other reserves available. And instead of forcing the taxpayer to deal with the reserve, with the reserve all at one time, we're going to take that capital gain and we're going to spread it out over a number of years. And the idea would be that then we had the disposition back here. But we're going to level out the tax bill or the tax burden for this over a number of years. And with especially recent changes to how income tax works in this country, this can actually be quite attractive. Let's say for the sake of argument, I could take a million dollar capital gain instead of having it all taxed at one time, when if you take your 50% inclusion rate, you'd have $500,000 here. Instead, maybe you could use a five-year reserve. And this is not available very often. It's only a very narrow set of circumstances where this might apply. But if I do have a reserve available, I might spread that taxable capital gain out, take $100,000 a year of income instead, that's going to keep basically $400,000 of income out of those higher tax brackets. We're going to use the lower tax brackets many times. So what does this mean? Well, for our purposes, the reserve we're going to look at is the capital gains reserve. And this is used on the sale of a business. So the idea here is you're selling a business or you're buying a business. Both positions are actually made easier by this. The government encourages us to actually buy and sell businesses this way. So the problem for the buyer is potentially lots of tax. Sorry, I apologize. For the problem for the buyer is potentially lots of tax. So we can actually knock that tax burden down. The problem for the buyer is coming up with the cash. So we're going to make it easier for that person to come up with the cash. And I'll show you a very, very simple scenario. So let's say that Jim is selling a business. And his business is worth $2 million. So the business has a $2 million fair market value. And Alice is buying the business. She's going to pay fair market value. So. Alice is buying this thing. So we have two sort of trade-off problems here. $2 million is a lot of money. So Alice maybe can't come up with all $2 million all at once. Maybe she only has, let's say for the sake of argument, $1,100,000. Okay. So Jim says, well, I really want to sell the business, but I don't necessarily need $2 million all up front. And Jim recognizes that if he takes that, that's lots of tax to pay. 
So Jim says, Alice, I'll tell you what. Why don't you pay me the $1.1 million now? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to pay the $1.1 million now. Jim transfers all of the shares of the business to Alice. And let's assume for now that this is a qualified small business corporation. It actually doesn't have to be to use the reserve, but it does have to be in order to use the lifetime capital gains exemption. These two things often go hand in hand. So Alice pays $1,100,000 right now, but she gets 100% of the shares. She gets the whole business. And what happens this year, very simple here, Jim has just $1.1 million of proceeds for this year. He says that's fine. And he uses his lifetime capital gains exemption, which it's 2016 as I go through this. The lifetime capital gains exemption is currently $824,176. That means that this year Jim pays tax on a capital gain net after all of this of $275,000. $824 in 2016. And that's capital gain, so of course we'd attach the 50% inclusion rate. And that gives Jim a relatively small tax bill relative to taking in $1.1 million. What's really significant for our purposes is that he sold $2 million worth of stuff they agreed on a $2 million purchase price, so there's still $900,000 that would be left in what we call the reserve here. Okay, so we know that's going to come about over the next four years. So, at this point, we know we have $900,000 in the reserve and four years left. So we can look at each subsequent year now. We say, okay, in 2017, and this is where we have to do a little math. So we've got $900,000, and we would take 900000 divided by four, and that gives us 225000 That is the least amount that Jim can take for his proceeds of disposition, the maximum that he can take will be 1,100,000. And that's based on last year's proceeds. So you can't take more than you took last year and you have to set this up so that you have this schedule which is either going to be a level balance or a decreasing balance. So let's say that the amount they actually agree on, just for the sake of argument, is going to be $300,000. And now for Alice, this is nice, she might actually be using the income generated by the business to provide her with that $300,000. She's in good shape because of this. Let's go to 2018 then. So we had $900,000 in the reserve. We took 300,000 of proceeds that year, Jim did. So now there's $600,000 left in the reserve and three years left in the reserve. So that means the least that we can take, the lowest amount we can take that year is $200,000 and I think we're starting to figure this out and the maximum is going to be based on last year's proceeds which is $300,000 so they would settle on and it's quite likely they would have settled on this amount all beforehand if these amounts are variable based on the earnings generated by the business you run some risk that this may not be a capital gain it might then be considered as income and then we can't use the capital gains reserve and, of course, then Jim would pay tax at 100% inclusion rate rather than a 50% inclusion rate. 
So let's say for the sake of argument that this year they settled on $250,000. So now we can keep going and in 2019 we would have 600 less 250 so we still have then 350,000 left in the reserve with two years left now and that means we have a minimum of $175,000 and a maximum based on last year's proceeds at 250 so let's say for the sake of argument we go to 200,000 here and we then go to the last year 2020 that is the fifth year from the date when the original transaction happened here well this is easy it's hundred and fifty thousand dollars that's the only amount that it can be that's the 350 less the 200 so now we know that this saves Alice having to come up with a bunch of cash up front she still came up with 1.1 million dollars but she was able to use the business to generate that 300 and that 250 and that 200 and that 150 and Jim similarly benefits Jim is paying tax on three hundred thousand dollars this year and 250 this year and 200 this year and 150 this year so it's a good deal for both of them now there is an argument to be made here that Jim would have been better off with the full two million dollars up front and that's probably true that he could have invested that money and maybe he would have been better off than even the tax savings he generates however the very real consideration here is that it's hard to find buyers for businesses like this and two million dollars might be outside of Alice's reach to come up with so now let's have a look at some of the what ifs that arise along the way here so what if Jim dies somewhere along the way so if Jim dies then whatever's left in the reserve for that year is added to his income so whatever's remaining in the reserve that amount just gets added to Jim's income for the purpose of his terminal tax return there is a possible exception to that and the exception here is if Jim's wife is or Jim's spouse Jim's spouse could take over that responsibility and could take over generating the income so Jim's wife can essentially step into Jim's shoes here this is definitely one where you need the accountant there's a bunch of formalities that have to be met here we have to make sure the planning was done in advance to make sure that she actually would be taking on that responsibility so you can pass this on to a spouse another special circumstances with a family succession so normally we have five years but in this case when you're selling to family you can use 10 years that's actually something that's pretty common in farm succession in a lot of farm succession the kids will buy the farm and they will pay mom and dad out of the revenues generated by the farm over the next 10 years and what if Jim is not getting paid well he still has the reserve obligation so just because Alice stops paying him it doesn't free Jim up from having to deal with these tax consequences so this is a very real concern for Jim this is part of why he wants to do due diligence on his buyer of his business he wants to make sure he's actually going to get paid now if this does happen he may be able to use a capital loss or an allowable business investment loss to deal with this again that's where we need to bring in the accountant the tax lawyer as you can see it's very important that we deal with the right professionals at the right times here so fairly complicated concept
but it does have some practical applications. It's good for the planner to be aware of. I hope this has helped, and I hope that you do understand the concept of the reserve and when you might use a reserve in some real-life planning scenarios. Thank you very much, and enjoy your continued study.